Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير أشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم جعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and bearing witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his final messenger. And we ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon his final messenger Muhammad وسلم, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in their blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine yourself for a moment in the trenches with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Al-Khandaq, during one of the most pivotal moments in the seerah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they are building a trench and the consequence of that trench being properly constructed and that strategy working is one of life or death, meaning the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were not sufficiently armed from a dunyawi perspective, from a worldly perspective, nor organized in terms of the ranks of armies that they would typically do so for battle. But the strategy from a worldly perspective was all dependent upon this one working, building a trench that would protect the Messenger of Allah and the companions of the Prophet, may Allah be pleased with them, and all of the residents of Medina, from the onslaught of the largest army that the Arabs had ever seen. And the hypocrites whispering, though it was a different occasion, the spirit of which, the people are large in number, your ruins, and the hypocrites from within, assisting against our Prophet وسلم, committing treason and the Prophet وسلم, starving not eating for days upon days upon days with the stones tied to his stomach وسلم, to prevent death to prevent starvation and in that desperation Rasulullah rises up and he looks towards these young companions most of them in their 20s and 30s and they're building away at this trench and they're covered in mud and he looks at them sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he says allahumma la aisha illa aish al-akhirah faghfir lil ansar wal muhajirah allahumma la aisha illa aish al-akhirah o oh allah there is no life except for the life of the hereafter there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. To be able to say that at a moment where death is so imminent, where one intrusion of the ditch would ruin the entire strategy from a worldly perspective, and you're very likely facing a genocide, and to say with confidence and certainty, Allahumma la aisha illa aish al akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. This isn't real. This is not real. And particularly when he makes dua for the Ansar and the Muhajireen, the people of Medina and the people of Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ is looking at the youth of the Ansar, young people whose fathers also died young, but not fighting for Islam or not doing anything noble, but fighting for tribalism. Young people who did not get to live the normal life of youth. And Rasulullah is looking at them to say لا عيش إلا عيش الآخرة, that the real life is not here anyway. Your true life is after you pass away. There's something beautiful about this and profound as we live in a day of age where we have al mawt al-fuja'a, sudden death. People die young, sometimes suddenly. We lost a great man, Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimahullah ta'ala, 47 years old, suddenly died in Salat al-Maghrib last week. People die young. Al Mawtul Fuja'a. And sometimes you see someone die young and you think to yourself, they did not live a full life. They didn't get to have from this dunya what other people have from this dunya. You see a young person and you have huzn, you have grief. They could have had so much more in this life. They didn't get to graduate, they didn't get to get married, they didn't get to uh, have this happen and this career happen and visit this place and have this. And sometimes you see religious young people, practicing young people, and you say they're missing out on life. They're missing out on this dunya. 
and as a form of tughyan, it is a form of rebelliousness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have a self-imposed timeline within our lifetime where we have decided that you don't get serious about deen until later on in life as if it's guaranteed let me enjoy my youth let me do the things that other teenagers do not expecting to die as a teenager then let me do the things that other college students do not expecting to die as a college student then that other young couples do not expecting to die while you're still a young couple that you want to live your full life early and then later on I can retire and become religious I can start going to Fajr I can start going to the masjid, I can start becoming practicing, I can start doing this and start doing that, as if it's guaranteed. Why? Because of an idea that life is early. I need to take advantage of life. I need to enjoy my life while I still have it. And your Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allahumma la Aisha illa Aisha al-Akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. To suggest that life actually starts from the moment of death. By the way, dear brothers and sisters, the khutbas of the Prophet ﷺ were Surah Qaf, reminders of just the hereafter. Because if you change your perspective for a moment, everything else falls into place. Life starts from the moment of death. Your true life actually starts when you die. Now if you think about how powerful and transformative of a concept that is, and then read the ayat of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Surah An-Nahl, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِّن ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنثَىٰ Whoever does good, male or female, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ And they are believers. فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Then we will give them a good life. A good life, we will give them a good life. Certainly, there will be things in this dunya that you experience of Jannatul Yaqeen, the paradise of certainty in the heart. But a good life is not here. The good life is what comes after. It's where true haya is. It's where true life is. And subhanAllah, you look at the opposite of that. One ayah of the Qur'an, so powerful. And it comes in the context of Surah Al-Fajr. Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you're standing there on the day of judgment. You're not in a ditch. You're not in a ditch in this dunya where the Prophet tells you, La Aisha illa Aisha al akhirah You're standing there on the day of judgment. And everything is happening so quickly. Dukkatil ardu dakkan dakka. The earth is crushed to pieces. There is nothing even to hang on to. You know, you think about memorabilia, you think about the physical specimens. The earth is completely reduced to pieces. It's no longer here. Everything that resembled this dunya is gone except for the deeds that have now carried into the hereafter. And then your Lord presides over the judgment. And the malaika are arriving, rows upon rows, safan safa, they're lining up. You're seeing it all happening in front of you the way you used to hear. And then hellfire is brought forth. Ji ayawma idin bi jahannam. And then at that point, subhanAllah, listen. At that point, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ At that point, there's dhikr. At that point, you remember. And Allah says, وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَ But what good is remembering at that point? What good is it to think about the consequences at that point? يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي This is the main verse. He says at that point, Oh, how I wish I put forth for my haya, for my life. Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish I would have prepared for my life. Not I wish I would have made use of my life. I wish I would have prepared for my life. Because you're realizing at that point, la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah. There is no life except for the life of the hereafter. Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. 
Ya Allah, I wish I would have prepared for my life. This is a paradigm shift. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجَزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ We will give them a good life, a good life, and we will reward them in accordance with the best of their deeds. With the best of their deeds. Dear brothers and sisters, when you start to approach death as the moment of birth, as the moment when life starts, that doesn't make you a pessimistic person. Far less, it actually makes you a very optimistic person. Because you're preparing for something that you know is certain and that you know is real. Everything else in life, in this life, that you prepare for, there's some level of uncertainty. How many people die in a car accident on the way to their wedding? How many people, right before they get to that step that they waited, your graduation, I'm not saying you shouldn't prepare for your graduation, but right before their graduation, they pass away. Everything else in this dunya, uncertain. Death is certain, and what comes after it is certain. Certain. And so the believer is an optimist. Because they know that this life is only a matter to prepare for what is really life. What we call life here is just a place to deposit. I'm at the bank of good deeds, depositing my good deeds. That's all. And so I don't feel like I have to hurry up and get it all in here. I have to live the best life. You know what? I might not see all of the most beautiful places in the world. I might never get to travel the world. But bi idhnillah I will see Jannah. I might not get to meet this person and that person. But bi idhnillah I know that if I deposit properly, I will meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the hawl. That's life. That's life. That's what I look forward to. I might not get to see my home renovations done. I might not get to see even the house bought. I might not get to see the car. But I know that that grave will be a garden of Jannah if I deposit properly. Because Allahumma la isha illa aishul akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. Not only will I not say, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati, had I not, had, had only I prepared for my life, but instead, be that person, man utiya kitabahu biyaminihi, who receives their book in their right hands. You get your scroll, you get your results. And the first thing they say, inni dhanatu anni mulaqin hisabiyah. I knew this day was coming. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that this day was coming. I knew that I would be handed a scroll in my left or in my right. I knew that I would be held accountable by Allah. إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَةٍ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ So now live a good life. Now he lives in pleasure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that live a life of pleasure forever in the presence of our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under the throne of our Lord in the highest level of paradise. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to pass through this journey in which we are traveling like a stranger, like a wayfarer, taking a rest under a tree. May Allah let our destination be nothing less than al-firdaus al-a'la, paradise, the highest level with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us that perspective of la aisha illa aisha al-akhira, that there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. So that when we pass through the trials of this short journey, we put them in perspective of the ultimate journey, the ultimate destination, the ultimate controller, the ultimate one to be desired. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'al muslimin fa astaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma firli al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat. 
والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لواردينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وأكواننا من بينهم سالمين اللهم اهدي ووفق رئيس الدولة وسلطان سلنجور دار الإحسان لما فيه صلاح وفلاح للبلاد والعباد اللهم ربنا لا تآخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة استو استقيموا Please make sure your lines are straight for Allah في سجودكم وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا آمين آمين ألف لا وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ يَسْبِقُونَ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ من كان يرجو لقاء الله فإن أجل الله لآت وهو السميع العليم ومن جاهد فإنما يجاهد لنفسه 
إن الله لغني عن العالمين والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ولنجزينهم أحسن الذي كانوا يعملون الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ولنجزينهم أحسن الذي كانوا يعملون ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حسنا وإن جاهداك لتشرك بي ما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لنبئنهم في الصالحين ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله فإذا أوذي في الله جعل فتنة الناس كعذاب الله ولئن جاء نصر من ربك ليقولن إنا كنا معكم أوليس الله بأعلم بما في صدور العالمين وليعلمن الله الذين آمنوا وليعلمن الله الذين آمنوا وليعلمن المنافقين الله أكبر يا الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
on the top. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. اللهم انت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولك 